Hey guys, Lord Modder A5 here, and today we're going to be using the Connect to do head and hand tracking in Steam VR using the software Driver for VR and the PS Move service. So let's get into it. Alrighty, so the first thing you will need to do is gather up all the software required for the PS Move Service Connect setup. Firstly, right off the bat, you will need Steam VR if you haven't already got it. Next, you will need either an Xbox 360 Connect or an Xbox One Connect SDK slash driver. Then you will need the PS Move Service version alpha.9.0.1 which is currently the latest version from Hipster Sloth. Next, if you are using a mobile headset, you will need either RiftCat, ALVR, or Trinus VR. Note, ALVR is only for Oculus headsets like the Gear VR or Oculus Go. RiftCat and Trinus VR should work for all other headsets. And finally, as far as the software goes, you will need Driver for VR. Now you will need to gather up all the hardware that is required. First thing you will need is two PS Move controllers. Then you will need either an Xbox 360 Connect or an Xbox One Connect. Next, of course, you will need a VR headset, either PC VR or mobile VR. The cost will depend on which headset is used. You will then need a Bluetooth adapter. Any will do, but I highly recommend the ASUS BT400. Next, you will need at least one USB B-Type cable or mini USB cable for the controller pairing in the PS Move service. And finally, I would recommend a USB cable extension. This is optional, but is still recommended. Links will be down in the description to where you can purchase and download any software and hardware you may need. The PS Move service install section of this tutorial was taken directly from my PS Move service setup guide and will show you how to install the software and configure the PS Move controllers for use. We will now install the PS Move service and configure the controllers. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just a quick overview on how to install Steam VR. So go ahead and open up Steam, and from the Steam store, go to the search bar and type in Steam VR. Once you've done this, it should pop up with a listing of different things. We're going to want to click on Steam VR itself. Now on mine it's already installed and it says play now, it's in my library. If you don't have Steam VR already installed, you'll need to install it. It should be right here. Okay, let's get to the PS Move service install. Okay, now we need to install the PS Move service. Go ahead and click the PS Move service setup 64.exe. Go ahead and click next, next, and install and go ahead and click finish. This will install in the program files in the C directory. Go ahead and click start and you should see PS Move Service and PS Move Service Config Tool in your start menu. That means the PS Move Service was installed correctly. The next thing we're going to want to do is install our Bluetooth dongle. So go ahead and obviously unpackage that, all that good stuff. And then we're going to install that in our computer. Go ahead and plug it in, and uh, down here in the lower right-hand corner of your screen, you should see a little uh, little arrow, and you click on that, and as you can see there, it says Bluetooth devices, but before we do that, I want to show you in Device Manager, Search and Device Manager. In Device Manager, you'll have all your stuff, but right here, um, usually up towards the top, you'll see Bluetooth. And as you can see right there, ASUS USB BT400. That's my Bluetooth adapter. So we know it installed just fine. Now, um, yours may say something different, but that's okay. Just as long as it's uh, recognized by Windows and uh, it is definitely installed. Okay, now that we got our USB Bluetooth dongle installed and working properly, we need to connect our controllers to our computer via Bluetooth, or should I say, pair them to the computer. In order to do this, we want to use our USB B-Type cable that is used to charge these controllers, as you can see there. To do this, 
the first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and plug your cable into the computer. Once you've done this, go ahead and click Start, PS Move Service. You're going to have a command line window open just like earlier. And then click the PS Move Config tool. Click Connect and Controller Settings. Once you have done this, you can go ahead and, and plug in your first controller, like so. When you do this, you'll have a red flashing light indicating that it is charging, just like it would charge. And you can actually charge these with the computer after you, of course, um, do that. But I would definitely actually recommend getting a charging dock if you can makes the whole life a whole lot easier so in the PS move config tool go ahead and click pair controller and we're gonna want to hit the PS button or it's called the PlayStation button on the PS move controller until we fill up the yellow bar as you can see there it says it's setting up sometimes this takes a minute or so it's kind of a pain in the butt There we go. It's Yep, that one done. So you can unconnect this one. Take a note of the controller ID. That one was zero. And then this one, we're going to do the same thing too. Go ahead and collect it, connect it. Click pair, PS button. Again, it shouldn't take but a moment here. And there we go. Let go. Okay, now that we're to the point where we need to actually calibrate the controllers, we need to um, do the magnetometer calibration first. So in order to do that, make, make note of which controller it is. Obviously we have the magenta one. Um, we're gonna cl click controller calibration and we're gonna click magnetometer. Now, if you do have a newer PS Move controller that came out with the uh, PSVR, you and it, it does have a gyroscope in it. You're gonna want to calibrate the gyroscope. There's actually a website, and I'll leave that in the description where you can go check that out to see which controller you do have. Um, so go ahead and click calibrate magnetometer because mine are the older ones. And actually, before you do anything, go ahead and rotate it and kind of zoom out a little bit. Grab your controller, and when you do this, it's gonna light red. And I'm gonna grab my <laughs> Thing. And what I do is I like to kind of do it a zigzag. As you can see, I'm filling up that bar. And I just want to keep doing that on both sides until it doesn't grow anymore. And we just want to fill that circle with as much dots as we possibly can. You're also getting workout at the same time and you know flip it up up and down to make sure that you're getting every point again keep doing it until it fills up all right once you've done that you need to make sure because this is the front facing of my play area that is the that is the direction i will be pointing when i play video games I'm going to point the trigger in that direction. So as you can see, if I was going to hold this controller, the trigger's right there, I'd set it like this. And then go ahead and click OK. And what this is going to do is it's going to magnet and, and make sure it's it's stable. As you can see there. So if I point it forward, it points forward. It's a little weird. So if you do that, you can click the... Uh, select button while it's done like that and it'll return so as you can see there everything's good now and now you're going to want to go ahead and repeat this with the other controller
Alrighty, so the very first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and go to this website here. This is the URL. I'll put this down in the description so you can find it easily and download the Connect for Windows SDK version 1.8. Now this is for the Xbox 360 Connect. Now if you have an Xbox One Connect, you will need to download the SDK for that. And I'll leave a link in the description for that as well. So all you have to do is of course go ahead and click download and put it in a directory you want. I'm going to go ahead and throw mine on my desktop here. And that'll take a few minutes to download. Once that's downloaded, go ahead and install it. Now I've already installed it on mine, so I will not be doing this. but it's very very simple it's just a matter of installing it like any other program uh, if you haven't done so already you need to go to driverforvr.com and download driver for vr now again they do have a free version which is a five minute kind of trial but i definitely and highly recommend downloading um, driver for vr and then actually paying the 15.95 here to become a full subscription Not only do you get the latest downloads that are available, you get um, great feedback and you can really, it's a great community. So I would definitely recommend doing that. Now, once you get done with this, we need to go do the camera setups. Let's go do that now. Okay, you're going to want to set your connect up on a tripod, shelf, stand, or something about three and a half to four feet off the ground and about seven feet from where you'll be standing like you see in the diagram. Once you have done that, go ahead and plug the connect into your computer and then we will move on to configuring driver for VR. Now that we've done the driver for VR installation, the connect SDK installation and the camera setup, what we're going to have to do is go configure driver for VR. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is actually make sure Steam is open and ready to go. Once you've done that, go ahead and open up driver for VR. Once Driver for VR opens, it will automatically open Steam VR. As you can see, I have my headset mirror open and my Steam VR uh, compositor right here. Um, that was the reason we opened Steam first, so it's already open and ready to go. Now that we have Driver for VR open, as you can see, it's the latest beta edition. Um, the first thing we're going to want to um, configure is the head tracking. Now normally if you've seen some of my other videos you've noticed that I have normally on free track but that's because I use FreePie with the PSI cameras but this time we're actually going to run the Kinect Skeleton. Now to be fair I've tried using the LED ball and the uh, LED light configuration but it just I just cannot get a good movement and good um, calibration with it so we're going to go with the Kinect Skeleton. The next thing we're going to um, configure is the hand tracking. Go ahead and click the drop down and just click out the PS Move service with Connect. Once you've done this, you can go ahead and click this, check your tracking response with controller mode or gesture control mode if you'd like. These things you can play with and see what you like the best. A lot of times the tracking responsiveness is used for Beat Saber, Box VR, and Audio Shield and the like. The next thing we're going to do is come down here and click Tracker Manager. Now, go ahead and open up Toggle Device Support Window. And right here where it says PS Move slash PS Move Controller Support, click it to On. Okay, once that comes up, as you can see, the PS Move service already came up. Go ahead and click Close on this window. And before we leave this window, we want to actually configure the con detected devices here. If these don't show up, what you may have to do is actually click out of this window, start driver for VR, stop driver for VR, then go ahead and click tracker manager again. Once you've done that, they'll show up. Just go ahead and select one as one, sign, and two, or sorry, um, the zero, as you can see the name there, as the number two, or vice versa. Doesn't really matter. Just make sure you have a controller on each one. Once you've done this, go ahead and click VR configuration. In this window, there's a bunch of options you can play with if you'd like. 
The one we're actually going to look at right here is move button plus move of controller. Now you could change this to either or. If you've seen my um, updated uh, driver for VR video, the one where it rescues everything for the PS Move service, <laughs> um, you will actually notice I change it to rotation of controller. Now, for some reason in the Connect 360 and the Connect 1, you don't actually have to change this selection but it's up to you. You can play with these settings as you change as you want. Now, if you haven't emulate a key press to reset headset or like a, like a C button or whatever you want, um, if you're using one of these to use a different headset, you can actually um, change and uh, make a key press for that to do a, um, a headset orientation. So in case your headset drifts, it's pretty awesome. Go ahead and click close on this window and then click close on this window. Now we're going to go ahead and click start on driver for VR. Now as you can see here it says proceed to calibration. This actually is for the HMD. It is for the direction of the HMD. So you'll want to put your HMD, your headset, in on the ground or on a table or something to where it's facing the direction you're going to be facing in your play area. Once you've done this, go ahead and click proceed to calibration. Now go ahead and click calibrate, which will calibrate the angle of correction. Now, as you can see there, it, it uh, made an angle correction for me of 89.6. That's pretty close. Mine's usually 90 or minus 90, depending on which way I have it facing. Once you've done this, go ahead and click close on the window. Once you close the window, the PS Move controller should light up, as you can see here. All right, now that we have everything set up, we got the Kinect installed and set up with the Kinect SDK. We have the PS Move service installed and configured with the PS Move controllers. And we have everything ready to go with driver for VR and calibrated and all that good stuff. We are ready to do the room setup for Steam VR. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and click Steam VR room setup. Now, if you do get an error on the screen, I'm going to show. I'm going to put up on the screen right now. You will need to go ahead and restart Steam VR, Driver for VR, and the PS Move service. So, once you get to this screen here, go ahead and move it over so you can see it. If you have it, <laughs> um, click Standing Room, Next, and we're not going to click this Calibrate button because we want to stand up first, facing the direction of our Connect. In this case, it's right there for me. So. Before you hit that connect, make sure you're standing still and straight. Because basically what the connect is doing is it's calculating, well, uh, SteamVR is calculating your head in calibration. So basically your head is the HMD right now. So you're gonna stand here, look at the connect straight up and click calibrate. Okay, once it gets the bars all the way over, go ahead and click next. And right here in this part, now you can either do it in inches or centimeters. I happen to know my height is 165 centimeters. Please don't look that up. I'm short. <laughs> and then you're going to do the same exact thing. You're going to look forward. In the, in the, oh, you don't have to look forward. You can do this so you can see your screen if you have your screen next to you. But you're going to look towards the face, your, your direction of your connect. And then you're going to click Calibrate. All right, now, the reason I'm having you, you, you need to do that is is because if you don't, if you move your head around from side to side, that bar will go all over the place and you won't get anything done. So go ahead and click next and click done. Now we're at the fun part. We can actually start playing games. So let's go ahead and head into the VR universe and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so as you can see, I have my head tracking movements work. I can walk forward, but if I walk forward too far, it loses tracking. And if I walk back, obviously I don't have any room back here. Um, but uh, yeah, you got good head movement. And, and as far as head movement, you could turn around. You can even turn all the way around, and uh, that'll work. Um. 
So as far as your controllers, as you can see, they're wonky, and that's because of the way the PS Move controllers are sitting. But as you can see, they do track, you know, my movement. But if I put my hand in front of my face, it gets really wonky. It also messes with my head tracking movements. The same with this. If you put both hands in front of your face, it it's it has a hard time. Now it does head tracking, but your controllers go insane. Now. The PS Move server is part of this. I'm going to show you something. As you can see, I'm holding the controller with my right hand. But it's in my left hand. Same with my left hand and right hand. The reason is, is because the two controllers coincide with certain side. Now in SteamVR, in order to calibrate your controllers to be in the proper orientation of correction, you'd want to hit the select button that's on the side of the controller and that'll help orientate the correct direction. So like, if I put the controller going this way, see how it does that? But like, see now it's messed up? I can hit that select button and it'll correct it. Now when you do that, you wanna make sure you're facing, as you can see there, um, your center line. Now as far as tracking, it does track pretty good. Um, I haven't had a whole lot of problems uh, with this setup, now this setup, like I said, is great for Beat Saber, rhythm-based games, um, and like you can play VR chat, um, some other things. So, but I will show you tracking. So, in front, not so good. To the side, so pretty much from about right there to about right there, you get pretty good tracking. You go back any further, you lose tracking. It's kind of like the Oculus Rift with like a one or a front facing setup. So let's go ahead and open up Beat Saber. So as you can see in Beat Saber, the game tracks pretty well. Go ahead and click continue here. So. My controllers track pretty good. Now, as far as Beat Saber goes in some rhythm games, like I said before, in the calibration of uh, responsiveness, you could speed up the responsiveness of the con of the, the tracking of the Kinect to where it'll work for you. So let's uh, try this. Now, I'm not going to be on hard here. See how well I do. So as you can see, it tracks pretty well. I'm not careful when I hit that ukulele. <laughs> or something. Must be a table. Line. So that's one downfall of this. You have no guardian, you have no boundaries. Same with the PS Move servers. But as you can see, it tracks pretty good. And uh, you can get through. a few songs. Now, something you don't may not notice, I don't know if you noticed it or not, but uh, the PS Move controllers I think, tend to, if you rotate them too hard, they'll go crazy. So if I do that, you can see it kind of tracks here. Yeah, see it right there, it's kind of tracking. But it's a glitch, I think, of the, my controllers. Your your controllers may be different. Now, when you're playing, you could experience drift of the controllers. And again, that's just fixed with that select button on each controller. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is um, 
using the Kinect, like I said before, you don't have the controller movement problems as you do using the PS Move service. Now, as you can see, my controllers seem to be a little glitchy when I do that, and that's because it's having problems seeing my hands, where my hand placement is. But like I said, if you're up like this, as you can see, it doesn't glitch at all. Um, that's why Beat Saber is a good game to play. But if you want to move, as you can see, if I press in on the controller and I move forward, it has that little dot move forward. If I move back, side to side. And the same with this controller over here. Right, left, forward, and back. And it works pretty good. I'll show you in Pavlov. Okay, so as you can see, I can track pretty good. But again, just like I said before, if you go in front, it has a lot of problems and starts glitching out. Um, let's move forward a little bit. As you can see, when I did that, I can move back, move side, and side. Would I recommend playing Pavlov like this? No, because you have to have 360 degree movement. But, I mean, it does function. Now, what would you do if you wanted to play a 360 degree game? But you can't turn around because, well, you would lose controller tracking. You would want to hit the triangle button. And that will turn you around. You'd be able to turn, you know, move forward. Grab what you needed. Hit the triangle button again. And move back to what you were doing. So, it works pretty good for that. So, um, would I recommend this? Yeah, I think I would. I think it's pretty awesome. So, the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One Connect are both really cool pieces of technology. So if you don't have deep pockets and you're on a budget and you happen to have a gaming computer, this is by far, in my opinion, the best low budget and fun way to get into VR. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and check out my Discord, my Facebook, and my Twitter. And as always, gamers, we'll see you in the next video. Yeah.